Welcome to What's the Gist? I'm Matthew Swain. I'm your host, probably your teacher. Well, today it's book review day and I've got a great one. It's called Children of Blood and Bones. It's a 2018 young adult fantasy novel by Nigerian American novelist Tommy Adiemi. Now, the book ADM is ADME's debut novel and the first book in a plan of trilogy. The second one's already out. And it follows the heroine uh, Zilini as she attempts to restore magic to the kingdom of Oroshia. Now, <clears throat> the book received one of the biggest young adult uh, publishing deals ever. And Disney's already signed on for the movie rights. So a blockbuster film is uh, coming soon. I'm optimistically anticipating that any film version stays true to the author's strong voice and the rich African heritage and gives due justice to proper representation. We want to talk about the influences. ADMEs drew inspiration from Yorobi culture, which is a Nigerian Western uh, African religion and Western fantasy fiction like Harry Potter and Avatar, uh, The Last Airbender. And and from uh, mixed in wonderfully with um, African mythology and, and, and to create something actually fresh and new. Um, the hopelessness uh, she felt at police shootings of black Americans also motivated her to develop this story. And Adiyama was also affected by the negative backlash um, against the black characters uh, in the film a version of the Hunger Games. And so she wanted to write a story that uh, so good that even racists would want to read it. Now, I'm going to tease about the plot here. The novel takes place in the fictional country of Orosha, which is inhabit inha inhabited by two distinct people, the diviners who were uh, who are capable of uh, becoming magical magi, and they have this uh, they have this mark uh, of white hair, um, and the non magical uh, ruling clan of the Crocidians. Uh, Eleven years prior to the events of the book, King Sara, the big bad guy, figures out how to switch off magic and orders the slaying of many of the defenseless diviners, including the mother Zelinis. Since that time, diviners have been severely depressed, uh, oppressed. Dun, dun, dun. Some major themes in the work is, is prejudice and inequality. Um, there's duty to family versus um, taking care of yourself. There's faith and tradition, and there's cycles of violence. <clears throat> Now, I'm going to comment on the biases. Now, keep in mind that th this is a fantasy novel, and all the characters are fictitious and, and a fantasy land, and, but they are clearly influenced by Western, West African culture. All characters are, decri uh, are described as uh, a people of color, but there is still bias and racism and, and acts of violence uh, described in the story between the ruling class and the prosecuted magi. Furthermore, the magi are made to become slaves, which you know, mimics the clearly mimics the history of slavery in the United States of America. And the story is able to respectfully depict themes of, of xenophobia, brutality and racism, because it's it's told from the point of view is largely centered on the victims of abuse and bias. Shh, Max, be quiet. Now, Edimi's first novel clear, cleverly draws from West African uh, culture and folklore, was striking a more modern core, uh, chord in harmony with the Black Life Movement, Black, Black Life Matters Movement. Not only is the main protagonist a strong and inspiring African young woman, but so is the author. The book and the author are gems for the young adult literature. The world that told me uh, built has depth of danger, resistance, power, fear, and wonder, which are fantastically mixed well to create a magical kingdom that fits completely alive. My recommendation is, considering the countless merits of, of the children of blood and bones and the novel's relative, relevancy to current social injustice, I suggested it's very appropriately to consider for using in Nova Scotian classrooms, and I hope you consider reading this book. Well, that's what's the gist, and you heard that's the gist of it.